This is Austin Liddy Limits, where authors talk to authors about books and the craft of storytelling. Sponsored by Blue Ink Review, because typing the end is just the beginning. Find out more at blueinkreview.com. A suicide inside the Great Smoky Mountains National Park, or was it? An agent for the National Park Service's Investigative Services Bureau believes it was murder, and her investigation leads to a deadly confrontation with a band of men who will do anything to reclaim an historic homestead. 20 Mile, a reading by C. Matthew Smith. Hi, this is C. Matthew Smith. I'm reading um, from my novel, 20 Mile, that we've been talking about. Um, I'm going to read from the very first section of the novel. Chapter 1, May 10. The same moment the hiker comes upon them, rounding the bend in the trail, Harlan knows the man will die. He takes no pleasure in the thought. So far as Harlan is aware, he's never met the man and has no quarrel with him. This stranger is simply an unexpected contingency, a loose thread that once noticed requires snipping. Harlan knows, too, it's his own fault. He shouldn't have stopped. He should have pressed the group forward, off the trail and into the concealing drapery of the forest. That, after all, is the plan they followed each time, keep moving and disappear. But, the first sliver of morning light had crested the ridge and caught Harlan's eye just so, and without even thinking, he paused to watch it filter through the high trees. Giddy with promise, he'd imagined he saw their new future dawning in that distance as well, tethered to the rising sun. Cardinals he couldn't yet spot were waking to greet the day, and a breeze picked up overhead, suffing through shadowy crowns of birch and oak. He turned and watched the silhouettes of his companions taking shape, his sons, Otto and Joseph, standing within arm's length, the man they all called Junior lingering just behind them. The stranger's headlamp sliced through this reverie, bright and sudden as an oncoming train, freezing Harlan where they stood. And all the times they've previously made this journey, always departing this trail at this spot and always at this early hour, they've never encountered another person. Given last night's thunderstorm and the threat of more to come, Harlan wasn't planning on any company this morning either. He clamps his lips tight and flicks his eyes toward his sons. Be still, be quiet. Junior clears his, soft, his throat softly. Morning, the stranger says when he's close. The accent is local, born like Harlan's own of the surrounding North Carolina mountains and his tone carries a hint of polite confusion. The beam of his headlamp darts from man to man as though uncertain of who or what most merits its attention before settling finally on Junior's pack. The backpack is a hand-stitched canvas behemoth many times the size of those sold by local outfitters and online retailers. Harlan designed the mammoth vessel himself to accommodate the many necessities of life in the wilderness dry goods, seeds for planting, tools for construction and farming, long guns, and ammunition. It's functional, but unsightly, like the bulbous shell of some strange insect. Harlan and his sons carry similar packs, but each, each man bearing as much weight as he can manage. Still, it's likely the rifle barrel peeking out of juniors that has now caught the stranger's interest. This has been a presentation of Austin Liddy Limits, made possible with help from our good friends at Blue Ink Review. We're typing, the end is just the beginning. Find out more at blueinkreview.com.